The big difference I think that uh, Apple has added to this new product is the uh, ECG feature which will uh, take a look at your heart rhythm and that is a significant thing for a a lot of folks out there because given just how uh, ubiquitous the Apple Watch has been is becoming, as we mentioned and talked about last week on the channel, uh, there's a lot of these watches out there and there's a lot of people who uh, have a heart condition called AFib and don't know they have it. And this condition, if not treated, uh, dramatically increases your stroke risk. And what AFib means is that your heart uh, beats out of rhythm. And in the course of beating out of rhythm, your blood pools up in portions of your body, sometimes within the heart itself, and develops clots that then get through the bloodstream, go to your head and cause a stroke. And it can happen to people who are young or middle-aged as well as those who are much older. And knowing you have AFib uh, is a, a important step to getting treated and preventing these strokes from happening. It is a treatable condition and it's a condition actually that I have. I don't have a serious case of it yet. I have what they call a paraaxial uh, AFib, which is a, just an occasional thing. But uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, I was um, lifting my daughter up in the air. And what I've had for my, most of my life is a little uh, thump that I would feel my heart just kind of beat out of rhythm for a second and then go back to normal. My grandfather had it. Uh, my father has it. Uh, and they all passed it down to me. And thankfully, this at the moment is not a regular condition, but happens from time to time. And when I lifted my daughter up that one time, right before my 39th birthday, it knocked my heart out of rhythm. It was beating at a very, very rapid pace. I had to go to the emergency room. Thankfully, they didn't have to shock me, which is the usual uh, way to get the heart back in line. They just pumped me up with an IV and let me rest for a little bit, and it got back to normal. Thankfully, I haven't had that happen since, but I have gone to a cardiologist, and I got my full workup here, so my, my heart is fine. Uh, it's just this is something that I'm just going to have to deal with, and it, right now, thankfully, it's nothing uh, that is going to cause any immediate issues. But what's nice about having this feature on the watch is that I can take a heart rhythm uh, anywhere. So if I'm feeling like maybe something's going on, I can go ahead and just uh, take the watch out, put my finger on the, uh, the little crown of the watch and get a reading that's good enough to know whether or not I should go in and get checked out. I'm fortunate that when I have one of these things, I can feel it. But for a lot of people with AFib, they don't even know they have it. And that is really the biggest frightening thing out there. Uh, for people with my condition, which is occasional, the older I get, the more frequent it's likely to become. So I'll probably go from being just a once in a while AFib person to somebody that will have it more frequently. And I think it's just really important to have this built into a device that uh, is very convenient and available to you. Now, reading heart rhythm is different than reading heart rate. And therefore, they have added a new sensor to the watch on the bottom uh, with an electrode and you complete the electrical circuit, which is basically just the circuit within your body, uh, by touching the crown of the watch. So you've got a completed circuit going through both arms and that's how it's able to read what your heart rhythm is based on the electrical impulses uh, from your body. And that is, uh, again, very different than just reading heart rate, which these watches typically do with an optical sensor. Um, so it probably won't be as accurate as what you might have at the doctor's office with all the other sensors they attach to you, but it's going to be good enough to know whether or not you need to go and get one of those examinations versus just uh, continuing about your day. And it's nice to see that. But as a result of the fact that you have to complete that circuit, uh, the watch is not going to be looking at your heart rhythm randomly throughout the day as it does with heart rate. So if you get a warning that your heart rate is kind of irregular, uh, then go ahead and run that and see if you're having a rhythm problem. And that I think will uh, give you some better insight. But I, I'm telling you, I know there's gonna be a lot of people who get this watch and uh, do one of those ECGs and realize they have a very serious medical condition that they didn't feel and didn't know they had and might go a long way to improving their quality of life and saving them from a debilitating stroke or worse death. And this is really uh, great to see that on here. Now, this is not the first product to offer you a portable ECG mechanism, but it's probably the most convenient. I've been using something called Cardia Mobile, and I've got one right here. It consists of a little reader along with an app that you run on your smartphone. And some of these readers are built into smartphone cases. They've got a whole bunch of different ways that you can uh, carry it around with you. It's powered just by a little watch battery here in the back. And what you can do here is just tap on record an ECG. You put two fingers down on, from each hand on top of the sensor pads here, and it will start measuring your heart rhythm. Now, I am uh, busy working right now and talking, so this is not the ideal way to measure your ECG. You should be doing this when you're relaxed, but 
uh, you can see how this works. And what will happen is when I'm done with uh, running this test, what it will tell me is whether or not it thinks that I am uh, having an episode, uh, which I am not at the moment. Just again, if you're talking in active, it's not really the best way to record your ECG. Uh, but it does provide some peace of mind. And I was really excited because they also offered a, and still do, a watch band for the Apple Watch uh, for about 200 bucks. And I thought, wow, this is a great and convenient way to do it. Unfortunately, though, in addition to spending $200 on the product, they also charge you $10 a month just to use it. And I felt like that was a little much to ask. So I said, you know what, it's probably just easier to walk around with the little uh, thing here and uh, not have to pay extra per month just to use the product that I would pay $200 for. But that's what they want you to pay for. So nonetheless, it's available uh, on the Apple Watch. But this is one product, I think, that will not last all that long uh, now that Apple has come up with uh, basically a way of integrating this technology into the product itself. Now, of course, all this great technology is important, but you really should go to the doctor if something doesn't feel right. Don't go out and buy this if you think you have a problem. Go to the doctor, have them do a proper checkup of you, and then this kind of technology will be helpful for managing whatever condition you're diagnosed with. Really seeing a professional here is important. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.